What's going on, guys? I'm joined by Mark Woodley. Mark is a sports anchor at KWWL TV, and this is first time winning the award. Um, congratulations, Mark, and thank you for uh, for joining us here on this interview. Sahil, thank you so much. Uh, it was a huge honor. It wasn't expected at all. So, uh, you know, it, it, it was shocking, and it, it, it's great to be here with you. Yeah, and, and thank you for joining us again, Mark. So my first question is, um, you know, what was your career path like on your way to where you are now? Did you always know that you wanted to be a part of the sports media industry? And I wouldn't call either one of them really a fallback, but I had an idea of which way I was going, but the first thing was I wanted to be an air I'm flying with them. So I thought, okay, maybe a commercial airline pilot at some point in my life. But the problem growing uh, awful so that right. was out so the second thing was i wanted to be a sportscaster even so much so that all of this one but we would do our own sports cast at our bar we had I mean, vice soundtrack and it wasn't great by any means but you know it kind of springboarded me to where we're at right now as far as my path it was a, it was tough um I, I went to a tv program at all just had a small 10 watt radio station so i was the yeah. uh, sports director at uh, central college kcui back in the day um, I finally got an internship actually where I work now at KWWL TV. Uh, when I was done with that, that's when it became really hard because I didn't have really any job prospects. I probably sent out, you know, 80, 90, 100 tapes all over the country, really thinking, okay, I'm only going for sports jobs. I don't want to do anything else. And out of those 90 tapes, I got like three interviews. And the first one, it was a telephone interview. It was my first one. So I was super nervous drank a whole bunch of coffee, which was the <laughs> biggest mistake I'd ever made in my life. A friend of mine who uh, I met during my internship was a uh, was the chief photographer at a local station. So I didn't even go into sports. I didn't go in into an on Is being able to shoot and shoot well is really important, especially in these shops like we're in right now, where you know you're doing everything: you're shooting, you're writing, you're editing, you're reporting, you're anchoring. So uh, finally, after that, at the end of that, they gave me some opportunities to do some anchoring. I was able to get a uh, tape together. Went up to uh, KIMT in Mason City, Iowa, as the weekend sports anchor. And short path, but it, you know it worked out. Awesome, Mark. And and uh, real quick, uh, I apologize because my internet connection is a little unstable right now, so I'm getting a little rubber banding. So uh, I may miss a few parts here of this call. Drops. My apologies. Um, but yeah, that that sounds like um, you know a, a very interesting journey. And like you said, it, it um, it's not an easy journey by any means. So what I hear in a lot of these interviews is, um, you know, if you're going to get into this business, you got to make sure you love it because it's not going to be a straight, easy, uh, a linear path. Um, so Mark, uh, oh, I think I may have lost you. Yeah. Um, I got you back. Okay, good, good. Um, but yeah, so, so my second question, Mark is, um, what would you consider to be your favorite part of your job? Honestly, I, I would say just going out and meeting people in these communities, meeting the athletes, meeting the coaches, and being able to really share their stories because I really admire these people who actually will let you go out 
and tell their stories because it's their story. They're trusting that you're going to do a good job. You know, it doesn't ever necessarily have to be an all sports story. I love human interest stuff as well. Right. And when the person that you've done that story about comes back to tell you, you know, makes it a point to send you an email, give you a call and, and tell you like, man, that, that, that was really good. You know, our family, our community, everybody really appreciates that. And, you know, it, it doesn't happen too often, but when it does, it is absolutely amazing. Yeah. Um, I bet it is. And, and I've, uh, I've been hearing that a lot too, is, is covering those local sports. And, and so, because you, you get to, um, you know, give the athletes or the coaches uh, like a, a voice, you kind of give them like a, a, a megaphone that they, they wouldn't, their, their stories wouldn't be able to be um, told otherwise, which is, which is awesome. Um, so Mark, what would you consider to be the greatest highlight of your career thus far? Uh, that that's an interesting one. Um, I would honestly go back to 2015. Now, my sports director, still my current sports director, Rick Coleman, had a bit of a medical emergency in the fall of 2015. He's doing great right now, Good. but that kind of propelled me into uh, that spot. And during 2015, the Iowa football team had uh, one of their best years ever. They went undefeated during the regular season ended up in the big 12 uh, championship game lost on a last second touchdown to Michigan state, but still ended up going to the Rose bowl. So I was the one who got to lead, you know, the Rose bowl expedition expedition, if you will call it, it seemed like that because we sent so many people normally when we do a bowl game, a lot of years, Iowa and Iowa state are playing in a bowl game at the same time. We'll send maybe at most two people. I've done a lot of them by myself, but when we went to the Rose bowl, we sent five. I mean, we, we blew this out. This was a, this was a really big deal, except for uh, I was there for nine days. That's a long time to be anywhere. Yeah. And one of the first things, you know, they do at the Rose Bowl is the uh, visit to Disneyland in, in Anaheim. And they didn't want to send five people for nine days. So I was by myself there on the, on the first day. And, and I was uh, going live in Disneyland and I kind of contacted them beforehand to make sure I you know it Christmas time we've got these live view back packs that run on south towers I don't know how first of all I was editing on a sidewalk like now nah, we've got a space for you so I ended up in the break room of the Ariel's Under the Sea ride in uh, Disney's California Adventure. And it was the oddest place that I have ever <laughs> edited, worked video, because there's these characters coming in with their heads off. Right. You, you could hear the audio from the ride down the hallway. You know, you hear Sebastian shouting out, <laughs> it's always better under the sea. Ha, ha, ha. And that happened like every 15 seconds for the 45 minutes wow. that I had to edit. So it did get a little annoying after a while, but it was completely surreal because when you go behind the fence at Disneyland, it's like a warehouse. It's like a whole different world. Right. So there's that. And then by the time I'm going live, you know, I'm by myself. So I set up the tripod. I set up the camera, step in front of it. And they're like, you, you, wait, are you here by yourself? Yeah. It's like, no, no, no. We got this taken care of. By the time I went live, I had a crew of about eight people. I had like two lighting guys, a grip. I don't know what I need a grip for. They had the park videographer out there. It was the best looking live shot I'd ever done in my life. And that, that was a fun trip. And then the game itself, it was amazing being at the Rose Bowl. But I'm not going to talk about that very much because people around here don't like to talk about it because yeah. it was against Stanford, Christian McCaffrey. Right. It did not go well. Right. <laughs> right. Um, but it still sounded like an incredible experience, uh, nonetheless. Um, so Mark, my last question is for, for people, uh, that are thinking about getting into the sports, uh, media industry, what's the best piece of advice you could give those people? I'm not, I'm not sure I'm the best one to answer that considering how looking back at everything i don't think i would change much I, I would make it maybe a shorter time between college and actually find it sent out but one thing i would definitely say is, is don't pigeonhole yourself because uh one person i met during my internship who was a sports director at a rival station gave me some advice which i think would work for a lot of people 
people, I think it was probably the worst <laughs> advice I'd ever gotten. What he told me was, you know, if you want a job on air in this business, do not settle for any which in the end was not going to get on air. I had to find my own way when I became a photographer. It was terrible advice at the time. But, you know, find your own path. The one thing that will really stick out there are going to be a lot of people. There's going to be a lot of competition. Once you're on air, you've got to learn to be yourself, which sounds weird because you are yourself. Right. But when you're on air, you know, you try and copy people, you know, Stuart Scott, Scott Van Pelt. A lot of people try and copy that. And, you know, they don't have their own, something that would be extremely easy. It's not. It takes work. It takes practice. It takes being comfortable. And the last thing I would say, energy, energy is huge. Because if you're not having fun, if you're not enjoying this, and if that's not coming across on air, your audience isn't having fun and your audience right. is bored as too. And that's, that's one thing, you know, I think over the course of my career that I've learned is, you know, you have to have fun in this business. We cover sports. Right. That's a job. It doesn't feel like it should be a job, but it's a job and it, it's an amazing job. Right. Um, great advice there. Uh, again, uh, uh, Mark, apologize for the internet issues, but this was uh, a great interview. So thank you again for joining us uh, and congratulations on winning this award. Thank you so much, Sahil. And I appreciate the time. Of course, of course. Have a good day, Mark. Take care.